be the first Kings, first Kings on this here uh, Independence uh, Celebration time. And, uh, you know, when, when we're trying to always preach during these special times and stuff, of course, I ask God, you know, what really, the, what does really want to say? It's the toughest time preaching special days. And then God says, well, just preach about independence. Preach about independence. Preach about freedom. And, uh, and so that's what we're really at today. We're talking about uh, freedom, independence. Amen. Getting, uh, being able to, like, uh, you know, it says we have freedom of speech and all that kind of stuff. That's America. Yeah. And I want you to understand something here. Uh, that's America. But the thing that America has forgotten is that in God we trust. Mm -hmm. And I want to share some of that kind of like with you today. As a matter of fact, uh, our, our subject today is this, when the foolish are in charge. When the foolish are in charge. Now understand something here. It's independence, freedom. And when the foolish are in charge, guess what? A lot of foolish things happen. And, uh, and and you'll see where I'm going here in just a moment. Let me just read real quickly for you, kind of turn me out, shut me off, okay? Uh, first Kings chapter number 11. First Kings 11, verse number 43, the last verse of chapter number 43 of the book of First Kings. Now here's the Bible says, And Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, his father. And get it now, and Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his stead. You know, you, you, just to stop here, do you see the, uh, the the passing on from one generation to the next? Yeah. And a lot of times when stuff gets passed on to the next generation, the uh, next generation does not consider things like the last generation. Notice the Bible says Solomon was uh, in charge. He's now gone, and Rehoboam, his son, takes over. The Bible said this about Solomon. He was the wisest man that ever lived. Now, we know he did some foolish things also, but the Bible says he was the wisest man that ever lived. And by the way, we're talking as we uh, teach, and I'm just going to use one verse at the end of the message from the book of Proverbs about wisdom. Wisdom is that practical skill for everyday living. And so Solomon is the one who writes those Proverbs to his son. Think of this, Rehoboam. And he said, you know what, Rehoboam? Uh, you need to hear my instructions. And of course, Rehoboam had been around and had watched him live, and he wasn't even a child when he took over. And God said, now, Solomon is asleep, and Rehoboam is taking over. Now look at you at please, verse 1 of chapter 12. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel uh, were come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, uh, who was yet in Egypt, because he had been run out, heard of it, but he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt, that they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, now they're talking to him. The Bible said, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore, make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us, lighter, and we will serve thee. Verse 5. And he said unto them, Depart yet uh, for three days, and, and then come again to me. And the people departed. In other words, just give me some time to think. Verse 6 now. And Rehoboam uh, consulted with the old men that stood before uh, Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, and said, How do ye advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, that uh, which stood before him. In other words, he started talking to the ones that were teenagers when he was a teenager, had the same ideals that he had, and uh, now he is a king. And you know what he said? I think I'd like to hear what y'all have to say. What? The folks that are like me. Yeah, yeah. You still with me? Verse number nine. And he said unto them, Oh, what counsel give ye that we may answer this people? Because again, you guys grew up with me. You understand who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made thy yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than thy father's loins. Now whereas my 
father did lay you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father have chastised you with whips, but I will chastise thee with scorpions. Subject today is when the foolish are in charge. <laughs> I was reading this and I said, dear God, this has to be America. God said, no, it's Israel, but there's a good picture here. It's right. a good picture here. Now, now, before you get going too far, let me just kind of lay something out, then I'm going to pray. Uh, this is not about Democrats and Republicans. I got some news for you. There's foolishness on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. This is not about a man versus a woman. Guess what? Because we have foolish men and we have foolish women. This is not parents against the children. Why? Because it seems like both want to act foolish. The Bible says foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, and God says that, that fools despise wisdom. So we get to a certain place in our lives where we just basically say, dear God, I don't want to know what you want to tell me. Because remember, wisdom is practical skills for everyday living. Now, Rehoboam has saw, has seen his father on the throne. He's seen his father, the good things he's gone through. He's seen the bad things he's gone through. He saw the good decisions and the bad decisions. Rehoboam has seen all of that, and all of a sudden, he's now king, and the people are ready to make him king. And so he said, hey, older gentleman, what should I do? Hey, just lighten up. Hey, just love on us, and we'll, we'll serve you forever. And the Bible said he forsook that counsel. It didn't say he went to the young man and asked him, what they thought compared it. The Bible said he got the old man's counsel and you know what he said? I don't like that. Mm. So he goes to the younger man. The Bible said the one that grew up with him. And you know what he said? They said, here's what you need to do. You're the king. And you don't, you, you don't have to give up any of your kingdom. And you don't have to give up any of your authority. And you don't have to. And you don't have to. And you don't have to. By the way, here's what you should do. And here's what you should do. And here's what you should do. Go back and let them know. You, you don't want to hear that mess anymore from them. All of this whining and crying and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know what he did. Because mm -hmm. he forsook their counsel. So he took these young people's counsel. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff we're going to share with you here in just a moment. Mm -hmm. Because God is saying... You need to understand what happens when the foolish are in charge. Now, wait a minute. Before you start pointing the finger at anybody, again, this is not about politics. You've got, you've got foolishness in politics. Yeah. Matter of fact, you've got foolishness here in the pulpit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people are foolish in the pulpit. There's things going on that shouldn't be going on from the pulpit. Yeah. But don't, 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 just, don't just get excited about that because there's foolishness in the pews. Yeah. Yeah. And there's foolishness all in public. Yeah, yeah. So preacher, where are you going with this today? There's foolishness in us, get this now, personally. Yeah. Yeah. We have personally become fools. You say, preacher, are you, you calling me a fool? No, I'm not trying to say we're, you're a fool. I'm trying to say there's so much foolishness going on, and it's going on in us personally, and we don't even realize how we got where we are. And I hope to explain that to you here today so that you and I won't be part of the foolish crowd any longer. Yeah. We won't be part of the one that God look at and say, thou a fool. We won't be the one that despise wisdom and instruction and get an understanding about what thus says the Lord. Today I'm hoping to change what happens in here. I don't know what's going to happen out there in America. I don't know what's going to happen to maybe those who are listening on the internet, and I don't even know what's going to happen in here, but I've decided something. You want to know what that is? I don't want to be foolish. Yeah. Personally, I don't. I, don't, I can't yeah. stop anybody, but I can personally decide no more foolishness in my life. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? If I were to ask you personally, do you act foolish? What would you say? Yes. Don't answer out loud. <laughs> Please don't do that. Because there's some of us who say yes because we have false humility. I think I should say yes so that nobody will take it and, 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 and feel uh, inferior. <laughs> yeah. No, this is not false humility. This is being honest with ourselves. And let me just be honest with you. I've made some foolish decisions. And I won't do that anymore. And I want to help all of us today. Are we still okay? Say amen. amen. Father, would you bless now? Would you help? Would you encourage? In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to write down some verses real quickly. Number one, uh, Psalms 14, verse 1. And you can also write down Psalm 53, verse 1. And that goes, those verses basically say this right here. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I'm just going to ignore God. I'm not, uh, they are corrupt, the Bible said. They are done abominable work. There is none to do of good. So here's what God is saying. The fool, or the foolish person says no to God, and they're corrupt, and they just do whatever they want to do. 
And nobody's going to tell me what to do. And that's kind of how they live their life. And God is saying, you don't want to be that kind of person. You don't want to be the kind of person that said a no to God. You don't want to be the kind of person that's corrupt before God. You don't want to be the kind of person that your actions God not pleased with. You don't want to be that kind of person. Matter of fact, God said, they don't do good at all. Yeah. Wow. I don't want to be that kind of person. Right, this one that Proverbs 1, verse 7, we kind of hit it already. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. I don't be foolish to where I look at God and say, I don't, don't talk to me. Don't try to share with me. Don't try to correct me. Don't try to take a check. Don't do that to me. I don't want to hear it. And God said, that's what fools do. Fools do foolish things. Come on, somebody. Amen. Here's what the Bible says in Proverbs 1, verse 22. That was Psalms 14, verse 1, and Psalm 53, verse 1. It's Proverbs 1, verse number 7. Now, Proverbs 1, verse 22. The Bible said, how long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? Now, get this. And scorners delight in scorning. In other words, making fun of the things of God. Or basically telling God, leave me alone. And watch this now. And fools hate knowledge. I don't want to be in that category. And look at us, how long is it going to be like that? How long are we going to live that way? I hope somebody say, me, today is the last day. Amen. Yeah. Now, go write this down. Uh, Psalm 33, verse 12. This is the good, this, um, America needs this. The Bible says, Psalm 33, verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. When you guys say, God chose you, and what I mean by that is this, to live a certain life. He didn't say, you get saved, you don't get saved, you get saved. No. When God allowed you, he accepted you into his family, he said this here, I want you to live a certain way. According to Ephesians 2, verse 10, we are his workmanship, which God has done a work in us, and now he has a desire to do the work through us to make us what he wants us to be. According to Romans chapter 8, verse 29, conform to the image of his son. Somebody say amen. amen. So, so God is saying that you, the nation is blessed. In other words, the, the, the foolishness is gone. We allow God to have the place in our lives. We should write this down. Proverbs 14, verse 34. Proverbs 14, verse 34. Righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is reproach to any people. God is trying to teach us here. Sin is not okay with me. Right. Yeah. It's, I'm just not accepting that in your life. And, and don't think again. It's okay. No, no, but, but I'm going to give you some things here. God is saying, listen to this now. You can choose how you want to live. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But what you choose is if you're going to be wise or if you're going to be foolish. Yeah. Right. You don't get to be act foolish and call yourself wise. Yeah. You're only wise when we follow a God. Come on now, help me somebody. And yeah. you're foolish when you go opposite of God. Yeah. There's no middle ground here. What I'm trying to make, I make up my mind. You made up your mind when you don't go the way of God. Yeah. Yeah. I'll write this down. Uh, Psalm 9, verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. God says it's not going to turn out pretty for us. And I can talk about again uh, the, the final judgment. But here's what God is saying. I don't think this is what you want. Me turning my back on you, closing my, my heart to you. Not, not when I say heart, he, his heart is always toward us. But he finally said this here. You want to do what you, you, you want to do? Remember Proverbs chapter number 1? God says, I'll laugh at you when your calamity comes. Yeah. That, that's, that's what you want. God says the choice is your Nobody can make you live for Jesus. That's right. But if you decide not to, again, this is not about polity. It's not about just the preacher. It's not about saying everybody collectively in the pew. And it's not about the public out there. This is a personal assessment of my own life. And it's time for you and I all to do the same thing. Right. Yeah. Ask ourselves, yeah. are we foolish? Or are we wise? Well, let me just kind of get into it. It's okay to get into it now? Yeah. Some of you probably said, I don't think I want to hear what the pastor has to say today. Yeah, That's okay. I'll preach anyway. <laughs> uh, first thing I want you to get is this. Is the confusion of the foolish. The confusion of the foolish. I want you to write it down. I want you to miss this now. second thing I want you to write down is the counsel of the foolish. You probably said, oh, I know where he goes with that. Well, good. That means he wants to labor too hard. The counsel of the foolish. Number three, write this down. The conflicts of the foolish. The conflicts of the foolish. Now God said, wait a minute, 
conflict, yes, conflicts of the foolish. Let me just kind of help you a little bit here. Here's what God is saying. Some of us are fighting the wrong battles. Yeah. Number four, uh, the contempt of the foolish. The contempt of, are you still with me? Say amen. amen. I, now, now I'm telling you something. This, is, this, this has been a blessing to me. I think we're going to give you some things at the end where you're going to turn over your outline and write however you want to write because you're going to need the end of this message. All right, so first of all, let's get back to, number one, the confusion of the foolish. What is the confusion of the foolish? Now, watch it now. Everybody listen to me. Everybody look up here. Here's what God said. You are confused about something. You have your mind twisted about something. God said there's something right now that, that, that you don't have straight in your head. Well, what's that? You're not in charge. God says something to the foolish people think they're in charge. The foolish child thinks he's in charge. The foolish adult thinks they're in charge. The foolish politician thinks they're in charge. The foolish individual just thinks they're in charge of them. I can make my decision. I'm listening. And by the way, you better accept him. Okay, let me just make sure we got this. Look at you, please. First Kings chapter number 12. Verse number 15. See, because what happened is, is Rehoboam now is the king. And Rehoboam is trying to get some counsel. And Rehoboam goes to the older man, and the older man says, here's what you do. I don't like that. He goes to the younger man, and the younger man tells him what to do. And here's what he says. Okay, this is what I'm doing. Are you guys ready? Yeah, yeah. And you better accept it. Mm. I'm the king. Watch right this now. Three things I want you to get down here. I'm the king. I got the position. Let me, let me help you teenagers and adults now. See, so, so often times we get to be 18, and you know what we say? I'm 18 now. I'm in charge. <laughs> well, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know what happens when you turn 18? Watch this, Mike. You're 19 now, right? What happens when you turn 18 and you're in charge? You got the position. You start saying, I got the power. <laughs> I run things. Well. And here's what God says. And let me just tell you what all that is. So you got the position, you got the power, and what your problem is, is you got pride. Mm -hmm. Too much pride. Thinking you run stuff. I, thought, I wish I had time to go back over to labor. Remember over there in Daniel chapter number two, when Nebuchadnezzar found out something what was that? That God elevates and God tears down, and in your life too, God elevates and God tears down. When God gets tired of you, God going to put you out there eating grass. To, you say, yeah, yeah. I've never been able to eat. I never had to eat grass. God said, but some of us don't wish we had to do just a little time eating grass and have to deal with the with the finale of our sins. Because yeah, yeah. we're not in charge. So, so, so here's what he said. You know what? I don't like what the old man said. I like what the young man said. And y'all going to do exactly what I say. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 15. <laughs> Wherefore, the king hearkened not unto the people, but the cause was from the <laughs> that he might perform his saying which the Lord spake uh, by Ahijah, uh, the, 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 the Shalonite, under Jeroboam, the king of uh, Nebat. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now see to thine own house, David. Uh, so Israel departed unto their tents. In other words, okay, you think you're going to tell us what to do? Let me tell you what you're getting ready to do. You're going to have nobody paying taxes. <laughs> Matter of fact, let me just bridge it down with a rubber piece of the road. The kingdom gets split. Yep. He thought because he was king, he could just raise up and say what he wanted to say, do what he wanted to do, yep. and it was supposed to be accepted. Mm -hmm. That's what the foolish people are. Yeah, yeah. That's what the foolish children are. Yep. I'm old now. I'm three, some, some of them, I'm three times seven plus more. Matter of fact, I live longer than Methuselah. Nobody going to tell me what, and by the way, when I speak, y'all better listen. Mm -hmm. And the folks said, yeah, right. <laughs> First of all, here's what God is saying. There's such confusion in our heads to think that we run our lives. Yeah. 
And we can just speak how we want to speak and do what we want to do and respond however we want to respond. And by the way, not just people accept it, but it's like this here. The Bible says God calls this thing to happen. Yeah. And we look, we look at God and say, now you understand? It's my life. Leave me alone. Wow. You got, you're confused. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. You run your own life. Yeah. Thank you. Come, America, are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. Thinking we get to decide how we're going to do it. The president, I'm going to do what I want to do. Matter of fact, I got executive privileges. And people say, well, they don't line up with the Constitution. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And then, wait a minute now. I'm not worried about the Constitution. I'm worried about this book right now. Amen. Yeah. And some of us say, I'm going to do what I want to do. And God said, but it don't line up with this book. I'm not going to let you listen to me now. Get away with that. Yeah, Write this down, Jeremiah. Boy, well, it's quiet on here. here. <laughs> Happy Independence Day, right? I've got independence. I'm free. I can do what I want to do. And God says, you're confused about that. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. In other words, he ain't got no clue. It is not in man that walked into the direct his steps. Man can't do this on his own. Verse 24. Oh, Lord. This is, what, this is what he said now. Correct me. But, but with, uh, with judgment, you know, when you do judgment, you don't do it like the world. Not in thy anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. Pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know thee not, and upon the families that call not on thy name. For they have eaten up Jacob, and devoured him, and consumed him, and have made his habitation desolate. God's talking about his people. And he's saying, you know what, folks that have messed with you, his people too. I better leave that one alone today. We're confused. We think we run the show. God says, that's what happened when the foolish are in charge. Mm -hmm. So you right now, here's what God is saying. You need to come to an old fashioned house and say, Dear God, I don't run my life. You run my life. By the way, if you're saved, you don't even own yourself, according right. to 1 Corinthians right. 6, 19. Right. You've been bought with a price. Amen. It's going to glorify God in your body and your spirit, which is God's. Amen. Your body, that temple of the belong to God. Let me give you number two. You saw it already, the counsel of the foolish. The counsel. <coughs> the confusion is this, I'm in charge. The counsel of the foolish is this, elevating the wrong counsel. Account, the elevating of the wrong counsel. I, I don't have to read it to you anymore in 1 Kings 12, verse 6 to 11. The elevating of the wrong counsel. Verse number 13 says this in 1 Kings 12. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him. And spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying. So here's what God is saying. The foolish have the wrong counsel. The old man gave him some counsel that would keep yeah. things together, and the young man gave him some counsel. He didn't understand it. As a matter of fact, let me help you a little bit here. He didn't know it was going to split the kingdom. Yeah. But God has given us this book, he says, for us as an example to understand. Come on, help me now. Yeah. But God is trying to teach us today is that so many of us are taking the wrong counsel. Let me just help everybody here today. First of all, forget about the world's counsel. It usually doesn't yeah. go in line up with God. Yeah. Forget about that counsel. The world's counsel is always trying to get you to think about you and to make you the priority and to put you in a place the way you make you feel good. But when it comes to the word's counsel, the Bible says the word is about Jesus Christ and what we do now is we put Jesus in the right place. We put Jesus high and lifted up. We let Jesus rule and reign in our lives. Amen. That's what happens when you get the right counsel. But we don't want that. So we don't want the world's counsel. I mean, we want the world's counsel instead of the word's counsel. And what we end up with is wicked counsel. Yeah. Let, just write it down. The Bible lets us know in Proverbs 11, 14, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Now, wait a minute now. Multitude of counselors trying to get you back to this book. Amen. When the scriptures counsel, when the sermon counsels, when the saints counsel, that's good counsel. Yeah. When the world counsels you, God says, guess what? Now we're going to put fools. Oh, I told my wife we're going to say fools. My wife said I would call him a fool. Now we're going to have put a, make ourselves foolish. You like that one better. 
He said, preach, we know what you mean. I don't mean anything. I'm preaching the book. Amen. It's right here in front of us. It's right here in front of us. So all of a sudden, guess what happens? Our lives get messed up. There's now 10 tribes. Oh, by the way, there was a total of 12. But there's 10 that have gone to the north and two that are down south, Judah. And guess what, real born? You ain't got but two left. Because we take bad counsel. Man, I took that counsel of the world in the wicked instead of counsel of the world. Now I'm having heartaches. Now I'm having situations in my life that I never planned on having. Yeah. Because we took that counsel. Mm. Come on, help me now. Yeah. That's what happened when we don't listen to wise counsel. The preacher says to young ladies, to listen. If that guy say you love me, then you would show it to me, and you say to him, if you love me, you would make me show you anything. That's right, that's right, man, that's right. Okay, I better move on, man, because that's not great well either. <laughs> Bless the man who walked not the counsel of the ungodly. How about this here? We talked about the conflicts of the foolish. The conflicts of the foolish. Man, I'm so glad. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got to go. Go to First Kings chapter 14. First Kings chapter 14. First Kings chapter 14. I, I hope to set some things right. I, 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 I hope to, the, 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 Brother Jason, I hope right now God will help me with my marriage. I, and I know he is. Because he's going to show me some things right now. I hope all of you who have kids at the house. I hope you kids will get a hold of this great truth. I hope you parents will get a hold of this great truth. I hope everybody in the church right now would understand what the devil is doing. <clears throat> because when the foolish are running things, God says we have the wrong conflicts. That's what the Bible says here. You with me? Yes. First Kings 14, verse 30. And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all their days. War between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all their days. War, conflict, disagreement, heartache in the land. Now let me tell you the reason why. Number one, they didn't recognize who the real enemy, enemy was. And number two, they weren't ready to fight the real enemy because they were too busy to fight one another. Yeah, they did. Say, preacher, where you get that from? I'm glad you asked. I don't want to make it up. Look at verse 25. Go back up. Guess what? 1 Kings 14. Are you still okay? Amen. And it came to pass in the 50 year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. What? This king from Egypt starts fighting in Jerusalem. Now what happened here? It was say, and he took away the treasures of the house of the Lord. That's exactly what the devil does to us. He takes away the treasures in our heart, in our home, in our church. And the treasures of the king house. He even took away all. And he took away all the shields of gold which Solomon had made. Took all of the valuable stuff. And King Rehoboam, this is not, you with me? And King Rehoboam made in their stead brazen shield, and, and he committed them unto the hand of the chief of the guard, which kept the door of the king's house. In other words, Shishak has come and taken all of the good stuff, and now here's what Rehoboam said. I got to act like everything's all right. Yeah. And, 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 it, and it was so when the king went into the house of the Lord that the guard buried them and brought them back into the guard chamber. Now wait verse 29. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did are they not written in the books of the chronicles of the king of Judah and there was war between Rehoboam and Judah all their day. Hey, <coughs> when you read this whole story, you'll find out something. That Rehoboam and the southern tribe, Judah, uh, the two and the half, they were now in paying tribute even to the king of Egypt. Wow. Why? Because nobody knew that king of Egypt was coming in and the king of Egypt was taking the good stuff and the king of Egypt was going to make them pay tribute unto him because they're so busy fighting one another. Let me help you parents and you children right now. Stop fighting one another. you got a greater enemy out there that we need to be fighting. Amen. Husbands and wives, stop fighting one another because we got a greater enemy out there. We need to be fighting. Church members, let's stop fighting one another. We're on the same side. We are the children of God. Yeah, amen, be sober. Be vigilant for your adversary. The devil has a roaring life walking about, seeking whom it is. Stop pouting, young people. Stop criticizing you adults and understand we're on the same 
Yes, sir. Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. What's our problem? The world has gotten us so messed up. So messed up. You know what we're fighting over right now? <coughs> what you call me? Right. <laughs> my, my pronouns are Right. Going to court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Firing teachers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come listen to me. I'm so glad. I'm a, and by the way, even if you don't like it, I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to say this great truth because I know who I'm fighting right now. Amen. Yeah, amen. Praise God. Amen. We got too much going on. Yeah, yeah. The, against the fight against the devil, when the devil said, I got them uh, and we're fighting each other and they don't even know. I'm coming in. Yeah. Rehoboam is fighting the north. The north is fighting the south. And Egypt is coming in. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. If you don't believe me, you look at your families right now. See how they're being destroyed fighting one another. Yeah. 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 You know what the devil says? I like that. Yeah. yeah. It's a sober vision. Your adversary, your mama, no. no. Your adversary, your children, no. Your adversary, uh, uh, the, the, listen to me now, the members in the church, no. I mean, that's even making it even worse for you. Your adversary is not that one that called you a name last week, or the one that walked through your grass, or the one that didn't acknowledge you when you walked by. They didn't even say hello to me. <laughs>
They look at that word and say, you know what? You can take it and do whatever you want with it, but don't try to put it on me. That's what the foolish are saying. Doesn't sound like America. Wait a minute. Doesn't it sound like any of us. Well, we're going to put it on the politician. The politician is going against the word of God. And they basically said this here. But we're here for all people. No, I'm here for God. Amen. And all people need to line up with God. But when the foolish are in charge. Are you ready for the conclusion now? I tell you, this is America. It's happening in our homes. Go back to 1 Kings 14. When the foolish are in charge. God says, now I'm going to give you some verses here. Foolish are in charge. 1 Kings chapter 14. And we're going to start in verse 22. When the foolish are in charge, God says, there's a certain love the foolish have. There's a certain lean the foolish have. There's a certain type of living the foolish have. This is the results. Can't get around it. All of this, Rehoboam did. Confused. I'm in charge. Uh, uh, you, uh, I, I'm, you better do what I tell you to do. And you don't even realize and he's fighting the wrong fight. So what starts happening? First Kings 14. God bless America. First Kings 14. 22. And Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord. And they provoked him to jealousy with their sins which they had committed above all that their fathers had done. It gets worse and worse and worse. But they also built them high places Idol worship. Images rose in every hill and under every green tree. We going to worship the way we want to worship and you can't stop us. Mm. And there were also, whoa, hold on, oh, wait a minute. There were also sodomites. You know what that is? Homosexuals. Yeah. Lesbians. Yeah. Gays. Yeah. What happened with that? Don't look at me like that. I'm reading the Bible right yeah. now. God said there's sunlights in the land and they did according to all the abominations of the nation which the Lord cast out before and just, we started acting like all of the sinful heathen nations all around us. God said, I thought you were saying in God we trust. God bless America. God said, how can I bless you? How can you say you trust me when you become so foolish in the land? Yeah. Yeah. Again, our love and our lean and our living it's totally against God. Well, how did it happen? You still with me? Go to 2 Chronicles 12, 14. This is so important today. How did we get here? Let me tell you how we got here. I'll tell you how we got here. I want you young people to get this. Just because you sit in church. I mean, church got you. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. I want your adults to get this. Amen. Just because you can quote scriptures. Yeah. Don't mean the scriptures are run, uh, running our lives. That's right. Right. You think it's ruining your life. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says. 2 Chronicles 12, 14. And he did evil. Why? Why did Red Bull do evil? Because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. How do we get here, America? Because we stop preparing our hearts to seek the Lord. I told you I was going to give you one verse from today. From Proverbs. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.23. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. And when our hearts haven't been prepared. When our hearts haven't been kept. When our hearts aren't leaning toward God. You know what God said? We're going to be back to 1 Kings 14.22-23. We're going to do what we want. Homosexuality is going, homosexuality is going to run rampant. Everybody is going to just say. You can't tell me what to do. Why? Because. Do you know that only foolish people can make a foolish nation? The nation didn't make you foolish. The nation didn't make me foolish. I became foolish, and now the nation is foolish. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You don't have a foolish family because all of a sudden foolishness comes hanging out. You say, I think I want a little bit of foolishness. Amen. No, we chose yeah. foolish ways. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. So what do we need to do? Are you still with me? Yes, sir. What we need to do is do what the Bible said that he didn't do. Second Chronicles 12, 14. He prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. 
God said, if you seek me, you'll find me. Amen. Matter of fact, he said, seek me early. Before you make any decisions, before you go any direction, before you, before you decide upon any way you're going to live your life, he said, seek me. And if you do, you'll find me. Yeah, yeah. yeah you'll find me. Amen. Amen. So here's what we got. Are you still with me now? Amen. So you seek the Lord. But that's not, that's just the beginning. What does God want? What does God say? What does God think? What, how does God want me to live? You seek God. You go to God's word. Why? Because the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Yeah. So I can't be saying, I'm going to seek my way because my heart's messed up. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I got to seek God's way. Yeah. And once I seek God's way, here's the next thing. I need to ask God, listen to me now, I need to ask God to soften my heart. Yes, yes, soften my heart, dear God. I'm seeking what you want. But I'm telling you, I got it's like that, that, that ground, Matthew 13, that, that wayside ground. That means seed can't get in. So we got to do what the Old Testament prophets said. We got to break up that fallow ground. Yes. How do you do it? You don't do it by just telling God, stop talking to me. You do it by saying, God, please speak to my heart. Yeah. Show me your word. Yeah. Help me to understand. My own wickedness and yeah. sinful ways. Yeah. We gotta seek God. Then we have to ask Him to soften. And what's God soften? Here's the, here's the God can soften our heart. You say, "Oh, I'm doing wrong." Then we gotta surrender. <laughs> I said, "We need to surrender." Yeah, that's right. I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, present your bodies as a sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable. That's our problem today. Well, if you didn't get it today, you probably never will. We become foolish people in a foolish nation thinking we can live our lives without God. And when I say that, I'm talking about His way. Oh, I got God. God said, but not my way. Here's, 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 write this down now. We're done. Joshua 1 8, you know it. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shall thou make thy way prosperous, and then shall thou have good success. Yeah. Before we have all the time, can I ask you a question? Would you consider yourself foolish or wise? Now, before you answer that, please understand. I'm going to ask you to prepare yourself to the, your own thoughts and feelings. Let's look at the book. Are we confused about who's in charge of our lives? I'm in charge. I'm old enough now. Yeah. Yeah. Noah was old too. And God said, build an ark. And he said, okay, this, this is us. I need you to start working on that ark. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm going to be like the rest. Eat, drink, and be merry. And you know what? He'd have died like the rest. Yeah. That's how some of us are. Dear God, I need, you, I need you to understand something here. I don't like the counsel that the preacher gives. Well, keep on taking the counsel of those that grew up with you. Yeah. Oh, no, don't take the ones who grew up with you. Here's what you need to do. Especially those who are raising kids. You need to take Oprah's counsel, <laughs> who never had any kids. Right. You want to know how to be a, have a good marriage? Talk to Dr. Phil, who's been divorced. <laughs> right. yeah. Don't look at me. That's exactly what the world's doing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'm an expert at it, but I have been married for 44 years. Yeah. And you know, people always say, I want to have a marriage like you and Mrs. Rob. Well, you got to understand, me and Ms. Rob side of this here, it's not our way, it's God's way. Right. Amen. Amen. And most of the time, truth or not, I'm going God's way, I have to get her on track. Wow. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're going to the wrong council. council. I'm, I'm, I'm just being so mistreated. Why? Because you got a spanking growing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to discuss it. You don't act sure about those, okay? Not me. Amen. And we again, we, 
we, we bear such contempt for the things of God. I don't like what God wants me to do, the way God wants me to do it. Let's change today. Somebody say amen. amen. Father, would you bless now? Would you help us? And dear God, the foolish right now are not trusting you. The foolish have not come to you for salvation. 